What? I'm trying to make friends with the aliens. Is it just my TikTok algorithm? Or are we like six to 24 months out from some kind of apocalyptic event? I mean, 2020 was depressing AF, but at least back then we were just doing dances on TikTok. Now my feed is filled with all these six parters about solar flares and climate change to induce natural disasters and cyber warfare, economic depression, human rights reversals, new viral pandemics, and alien invasions. Like, f Sorry. Oh my God, I almost died. No. At this point, I'm kind of rooting for the aliens because it all just feels so damn bleak. And even though I think some of these are legitimate, timely concerns, I've never been a doomsday prepper. Like my anxiety is bad enough on a good day. I feel like I would kind of just prefer to not think about all the terrible ways that society could collapse in the next five to 10 years. But I'm starting to think that maybe those guys are kind of onto something. No, but seriously, folks, nothing wrong with having some cheap and cheerful pantry meals on standby for whatever minor or major world event we encounter next. So while I'm not exactly at the point of readiness to learn how to hunt squirrels or raccoons, I will show you how a dietitian will build out balanced meals in a hypothetical post-apocalyptic world. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Future Bunker. if I'm laughing because I'm joking or because I'm taking this so seriously that it scares the f out of me. But hey, if nothing else, the meals that I would make in like a hypothetical post-apocalyptic scenario are really meals that could save me some serious coin in the current climate where I just paid $9 for a bunch of half rotten asparagus. That's where we're at, folks. Now, quick disclaimer here, folks. I'm trying to keep this light and fun. Let's not get into politics or conspiracy theories in the comments. I am definitely not trying to downplay the seriousness of a lot of these worldly issues, but I'm also trying to not perpetuate fear mongering or conspiracy. I have my own personal fears and concerns for our world, but I'm not gonna be getting into those today. So please do the same in the comments. So, you know, use this as your entertainment or as legitimate educational awareness to complement whatever prepper tips you find from legitimate preppers online. I'm just personally interested in taking up the challenge myself. So let's go shopping. But let me pop in here super quick, folks. I'm super excited to be working with Element again. This is a product that I was using like two years ago when I was on my breastfeeding saga and it really, really helped me recover. And I got back into it recently because I've been out in the sun, I've been traveling a lot this summer and I'm really really prone to sunstroke and I found this makes a huge difference in how I feel. A lot of my colleagues who work in sports nutrition also swear by Element specifically because it's got a science-backed electrolyte ratio of a thousand milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium and it's got no colors, sugars, or fillers. I've also found that having my electrolytes in the morning has had a really positive impact on my sleep. So even on days where I'm not sweating a lot, I'm usually still going to have at least half a packet. I love all things spicy, so the mango chili is my current obsession, but they've got nine different flavors, including their new grapefruit, which I love, and it's now available year round. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order, so that's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight of their flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash Abby Sharp, and remember, this is only available through my link. So you've got to go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Abby Sharp. So in preparation for this video, I watched a bunch of like doomsday prepper videos on TikTok and they were saying that there is a big difference between panic buying like we did with toilet paper during the pandemic and curating a carefully planned pantry for a scenario where A, we don't have access to perishables from the grocery store on the regular and B, we don't have electricity. So we we don't have any way to keep perishables cold and we also don't really have any way to cook them on a stovetop or in a microwave. So basically we got to think about building meals and finding ingredients that could be cooked very quickly on gas or on an open fire if you're really hardcore and that don't require any refrigeration. So let's start with our protein list. I would be stocking up on protein powder, canned tuna, canned chicken, lentils, canned beans, 
peanut butter, nuts, bone broth, hemp hearts, powdered milk, nutritional yeast, and shelf-stable dairy. Next, let's talk about produce. It may not be pretty, but I would be going for canned vegetables, canned fruits, freeze-dried fruits, and dried fruits or dates. We also have to think about whole grains. I'd be looking for quick cooking grains like white rice, quick cooking oats, couscous, or shortcut pasta, whole grain crackers, nutrient dense high fiber cereal, and obviously boxed mac and cheese. Sure, it's not whole grain, but it's damn delicious. And for fats, obviously we'd be looking for shelf stable oils like olive or coconut oil. Okay, post-apocalyptic bunker pantry stocked. Let's make some meals. Okay, so seeing as 95 of our meal ingredients are canned goods. I'm trying to find my can opener and for the f life of me. Oh, she's, I got it. Oh, this is the only thing that matters. If you didn't have a can opener in the apocalypse, you're dead, okay? You're just dead. So make sure you have a backup is what I'm saying. I was just texting all of my apocalyptic neighbors and in a real apocalypse, they probably would be like off. Also, we probably would not have cell phones. So yeah, never mind. I found it. Smiley face. All right, now let's make breakfast. Get yourself a can opener. And step two, learn how to use it. I've had a lot of employees over the years and none of them know how to use my can opener. It takes a special touch, which is why in the apocalypse, I will survive. No, nope, maybe not. Oh, yeah. Okay. So before the wasps descend, we're going to make some oatmeal. Now I have to be honest, I've never cooked anything other than meat and vegetables on my barbecue. We're going to call this apocalypse light because I'm not going to build a fire from scratch in my downtown backyard. So we're going to cook this over gas outside. I probably need an oven mitt. I'm pretty sure that would be important. I got some oats here. Pantry staple. Cheap and cheerful. Nice. Picked the wrong shirt, guys. I've got some canned evaporated milk. Smells good. Mmm, sweet. This is a bit of a bougie apocalypse, but let me tell you folks, I'd be stocking up on this. You want to talk panic buying? This is the aisle I'm going for. Forget the toilet paper, you know, forget the, the vegetables. I'm going straight for the hemp hearts. You guys know that, obviously. Get some of that in there. Let's do some peanut butter. Oh, she's hot. So many mistakes have been made already. Like I'm so ill prepared for this cooking session. <laughs> I'm sweating. I don't have anywhere to put my utensil down that's relatively clean it's a mess out here oh, maple syrup because when you're having a rough day you know spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down that's what they say so i'm gonna put a little bit of water we would have carbon filters in the apocalypse right i would okay i'm gonna pop a lid on go get an oven mitt maybe turn that up Mm, I'm excited. A few moments later. <gasps> oh, we did it. Okay. Ugh. okay. <laughs> I'm more worried about the wasp than I am about dying by rabid animal. Okay, I've got some protein powder here. Obviously, we would have protein powder. I would at least. Maybe you would too. <laughs> what the f The fear of... This scenario is making me a little wonky. Oof. I'm just, I'm moving my feet because I'm scared. I'm scared they're gonna get me. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. All right, let's serve her up. I'm hot. I'm hot and I'm bothered. I'm not cut out for this life, guys. I'm just not. Okay, so realistically, I feel like you wouldn't want to waste more water cleaning a dish. So we gotta eat out of here. I've got some freeze-dried berries. I mean, these would be perfect for a post-apocalyptic scenario because they're crunchy, they're sweet, they last literally forever. I don't even know, but I think we'll be okay. And now we have to carefully eat this. Oh my God. Okay, I think it's one of these situations. Mmm. Mmm, it's good. Poppy, you wanna try? 
a bit hot. So, give it a give it a blow. Sharing is caring. You gotta keep those fur babes alive too. Success. success. I had to change my outfit because I was sweating buckets. And y'all know we don't have enough water to go around. So this was necessary. All right, folks, let's make lunch. And of course, we're gonna do some mac and cheese. We're just waiting for the post-apocalyptic construction to die down here. The aliens are building their home. Next, obviously, mac and cheese, okay? Because if I'm going down, I'm taking my mac and cheese with me, okay? We love a good convenience meal around here. So let's cook some pasta. I guess we got no more clean water. <laughs> I gotta let that come to a boil. Losing my mind here. Okay, so that literally took a million hours and I almost was stung about 20 million times during the episode, but we got pasta. Now we flavor it up. So a little while ago, there was a ton of talk about how boxed mac and cheese was filled with phthalate, phthalates, phthalates, can never say it right, phthalates, which as I talked about in my video, are those endocrine disrupting chemicals that we wanna cut back on. So I'm pretty sure if it was the end of the world, I wouldn't give a f But because I am gonna probably serve this to my kids later, my little hack is to use just a little bit of the cheese powder, because this is where the EDCs are. And then I flavor it up with other stuff. We're gonna throw in our evaporated milk. Such a struggle, such a struggle. Okay, I got some nutritional yeast and that's gonna stand in for some of that cheesy powder. Plus it's gonna add lots of B12 and some protein. Give that a stir. I've also got some shelf stable grated cheese product. I've never really understood what this is, but uh, yeah, again, in an apocalypse, not sure I would care. If it tastes cheesy, I'm here for it. Tiny. Tiny bit of coconut oil in lieu of the butter. Note to self, in an apocalypse, maybe get some dairy cows because I'd be missing that. All right, I've got some white kidney beans. This is gonna stand in for a good amount of protein plus some extra fiber. You gotta stay regular when you're trapped in a bunker with people that you've basically exclusively only been hanging out with for Lord knows how long. And then I've got some canned vegetables and i always forget about canned vegetables i mean it smells a little bit like a nursing home which is depressing in itself but we still need to get our veg in folks so this will do the trick just gonna add some more cheese on top just dump the whole thing honestly when in doubt just add more cheese it makes everything better we all know that Food or anything. No, we don't need to ration food at all here. <laughs> this is one day of apocalypse, folks. Just one. Okay. Um, let's serve her up. I'm pretty sure we already used up all of our dishwashing water on hydrating me after I almost had heat stroke wearing a sweater in the middle of the summer. But here we are. And I'm actually excited about this. Mmm. Mmm. I can get down with this. The white beans are really nice. They add a nice like little bit of a texture and chew. Mmm. Mmm. You're gonna be into this. The kids are gonna be into this too. Poppy, a little for you. And then we save the rest for the kinders. She's into it. I need you, Poppy. I need you. All right, everyone, it is dinner time and we are starting with a staple rice. It literally took me two hours to cook this. And what I've learned is that it probably would have taken me a lot less time to learn how to build an actual open fire to cook over than it did to make rice on my barbecue. Regardless, here we are. We got some rice, which I may or may not have overcooked. No, it's perfect, it's perfect. I've got some light skipjack tuna. I usually buy skipjack over albacore because it's lower in mercury, though I'm pretty sure in an apocalypse scenario, I wouldn't give a f We got some canned mushrooms. Honestly, I kind of forgot how many great options there are in the supermarket in the canned vegetable and fruit department. So we got lots of ways to get our fiber in, folks. We got some canned, ooh, geez. That's gonna stink for a while canned beans it'd be nice if they fit oh my gosh guys look at this there's a rogue mushroom in my green beans walmart get your shit together and then i got these cute little baby corn those came in a can as well nice now a few key condiments i feel would be 
important if you're living in the apocalypse. Soy sauce being one of them. So we're gonna give a little bit of that. And I like to do like a kind of salty, sweet combination. So I've got a little maple syrup and then, oh, that's gonna be hot, I just know it. We're gonna mix it all up. So to recap, we've got our carbs here. Very important for energy if we did need to run away from, I don't know, like a zombie, an alien, another human, a bear. I don't know what's gonna be out there, folks, but we gotta learn how to run is all I know. We got our carbs. We have some protein in our tuna, plus some fiber in all of the veg I threw in there. And then I'm gonna top it off with some healthy fats, some cashews. I might be lacking some color, but I feel like we're just gonna have to get used to that. I feel like this YouTube video could be titled a myriad of ways. Either post-apocalypse meals, or college meals, or cheap and cheerful meals. I think there's lots of benefits to coming up with things you can make from your pantry. Mm. Mm. Oh, Pop, you're gonna love this. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we might be struggling, but I feel like Poppy's gonna be all right. All right, finally, we get to dessert. And I'm not sure how your priorities stack up in a post-apocalyptic world, but I mean, I feel like enjoyment and pleasure in what's left of this life is high up there for me. So I don't know, maybe I would just eat s'mores. Maybe that would be all that I wanted to eat. Regardless, I'm definitely having dessert. So let's roast a marshmallow on my Barbie. Eventually. Oh no. Mistakes have already been made. I'm usually like a full burnt to a crisp, give me all the carcinogens kind of marshmallow gal. But on the barbecue, that's gonna take me all effing day. And we need to save our energy for, I don't know, like whatever else you get up to when the world is ending. This is gonna have to be good enough. The makeup is just running off my face. Note to self, don't wear makeup in an apocalypse. Ooh, she's coming. She's coming. That's what she said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mm. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just do this all year round? I gotta really reevaluate my priorities in life because I feel like s'more should be an everyday, we're still here, live in our lives kind of thing. Obviously it doesn't have all the nutrition that you need, but sometimes you just need a little bit of pleasure to get you to that next day. And s'mores, I don't know. It would do it for me. Well folks, I'm not sure if I feel inspired, ill-prepared, anxious, or just, I guess, happy that I was able to make a full day of meals on the cheap. A reminder here that I'm not trying to downplay the seriousness of these worldly issues, and I'm also trying not to perpetuate fear-mongering or conspiracy. So just a friendly reminder to take this video for whatever works for you. So I guess if we can use this for nothing else, and I hope that we use this for nothing else, let this be a grocery guide for the days when things get financially tough. Minus the hemp hurts, because yeah, that might not be realistic. But on that note, I think I'm gonna go Google how to build a fire. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It was fun for me to think about, even though at the same time, it's kind of scary to have to think about. But if you guys like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. If you'd like some more pantry meals for whatever reason, apocalypse, aliens, a solution to the price gouging that is happening in grocery stores today, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit up my description for my free hunger crushing combo ebook. And I'll see you next time on Abby's Bunker. Beat me up.